ways. He touched so many hearts, touched so many lives with his word and his song. And so I'm just blessed by God's presence around us. And there are time to time where I have asked folks to do things for me and, and preachers that I ask and people to do things for me in their church life. And you know, we, we all want to do things. And every once in a while I've been known to ask someone to do a testimony for me. And, and other preachers have asked people to do testimonies for me. But I understand that somewhere down the line a preacher made a mistake in this church and asked Matthew Bowie to give his testimony. Matthew says, sure, I'll be glad to give my testimony. Matthew comes up, he walks into the pulpit, he stands up here, and the next thing you know, he's telling stories. He's telling stories that make the sailor blush. He's telling stories that go on one side and down the other. Matthew's doing all kinds of wonderful things. I wish the preacher got up and said, well, wait a minute, Matthew. Are you bragging or are you confessing? You're supposed to laugh at that one, folks. <laughs> Matthew was supposed to be funny. Some of them believe it, preacher. Some of them believe it, okay. That's what it is. They thought it was true. No, he wasn't, and I just I had had Matthew's permission to do that, so. Alright. Quick question. Is there an unpardonable sin? And have I committed it? Hmm. Interesting thought. Is there an unpardonable sin? And have I committed it? If not, will I? Can I? What do you do with that question? It's a question that has been thrown at theologians and preachers for years. What is this sin of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? What is this sin that can't be forgiven? What is this sin that, that we read about here in, in, in Mark chapter 3, verse 29, that he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation? Yes, there is an unpardonable sin. This is what it is. The unpardonable sin is the constant rejection of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The unpardonable sin, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, is saying, no, God, I don't want you in my heart. No, God, I don't want you to be a big part of my life. No, God, I reject Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior over and over and over and over and over and over and over again for your entire life. Until it comes down to the point where God says, okay, I'll ask you no more. Remember how Pharaoh's heart was hardened? Never again. Keep going back to that, no, no God, I don't want to do what you want to do. Last night, Kath and I went to the movies. We saw the movie, God's Not Dead. It's a, it's a pretty good movie. We enjoyed it. We watched it. What? Now, I'm not going to tell you the end. Now, now, I'm going to give a score of work. But it's a good movie. And it deals with this subject. It touches on it. How you can reject God all your life. And what your consequences are. And I'll leave it there. But. Sin, the unpardonable sin, is the consistently, continuing, 
define the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It's not some little sin. It's not looking at guys cross-eyed or girls with all kinds of crazy bitter right in your heart. It's not wanting more money. It's not more right reaching out and, and having more power in your life. It's not some little sin. It's a sin of eternal consequences. It's not a little slip on the tongue or a fit of anger in your life. It's over and over again saying, no, Jesus, I don't want you in my life. No, Jesus, I don't want anything to do with you. No, Jesus, over and over again, the hardening of your heart, the love of God. And every time you say, no, God, our hearts become a little harder. Until one day we will not even think of Jesus Christ. Until one day when God comes knocking at our hearts, it is a ton away. Because we don't want anything to do with God. I've had people come to me and say they walk away from God because they're angry at God. They're upset because God didn't give them what they wanted in their life. And they're angry at God. They want him to, they even want to deny his presence. Even that person can be forgiven. Everyone can say, yes, Jesus, come in my life. As long as we have breath in our life. As long as there's breath in our hearts. As long as there's something in our minds and our hearts that we can say, yes, Lord, come in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to ask you to be in my life. We can ask you. Now, there are some folks who say there are some unforgivable acts. And my household, tickling Catherine's feet on the bottom, is an unforgivable act. And it's usually very painful. <laughs> to me. It hurts because I get kicked real hard when I tickle her on her feet. So I haven't done it in a long time. We all have areas in our life where we just can't bring ourselves to forgive others. And someone hardly to the point they be so mad that you just can't say, I forgive you. Yeah. There are issues in my life that I deal with constantly of things that people don't do. But I continuously have to ask God, help me forgive in my heart and in my life. They've done unforgivable things. Maybe they stole the money from me. Maybe they think it's your favorite things in your life. Maybe they took your favorite bicycle and trashed it when you were a kid. Maybe they crashed your car. Or maybe even worse, your best friend stole your girlfriend in high school. Maybe the best friend could be, but I don't know if you married a better woman now, so I'm going to go anywhere with that one. But you know, we know these things. We have unforgivable things in our lives. People have burned. They've been wasting their life. We can forgive. These are hard things to forgive. But even God can forgive us if we ask. Because He does teach us to forgive others. He does teach us to love one another. He does teach us to reach out and to trust Him. He does say, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. All things can be forgiven and asked. See, so that's not to forgive you soon. A sin that is never forgiven. Ever. Ever. It's not doing something you're ashamed of. It's not doing something that makes you a bad person. It's walking up to God and staring him in the face and saying, I don't have anything to do. And turning and walking away. And he coming back again and saying, God, I don't want anything to do with you. Turning and walking away. And coming back again and saying, God, I really don't want anything to do with you. And walking away forever in your life. Until God takes your breath away. And there's no more life. But there's still room for forgiveness. No one in this world today that is breathing in this world. No one in this room today has committed an impartial sin. No one. You haven't done something that God will always shake his finger at you. 
You haven't done something that God will always say, I'm ashamed of you. You haven't done something yet that God's going to turn his back on you and say, how can I love someone as horrible as you? You haven't done that yet. Everything can be forgiven. There's still room for forgiveness in your life. It's not too late. Yet today may be the last chance that you can change your life. Today, I'm going to ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today, I'm going to ask you to surrender your life to God. Today, I'm going to ask you to step out of your comfort zone and step into where God wants you to be. Today, I'm going to ask you to surrender everything you have and claim the love of Jesus. You have the right to say no. You have the right to say yes. You can step out from where you are and say, yes, I am seeing Jesus. Yes, I claim Jesus. Yes, I stand on the side of Jesus. Yes, I want to be a part of what God has given to me. Yes, I want to be a part of what God's kingdom is. Or you can stay right where you are. Bow your head and make a prayer. And say, no, God. No. I don't want your forgiveness. I don't want to forgive. I don't want your love. I don't want to love. I don't want anything to do with you, God. Don't harden your heart to love Jesus Christ. I read a story one time about a preacher. He heard sins from someone that was talking. Sins that would make the hair on your back stand up. Sins that would make Joe started earlier. I had to say the wash. The sins of things that were most horrific and horrible. Finally, the man said, My name is Lucifer. The Romans preacher said, Confess your sins and claim the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And receive God's forgiveness. And then turn and walk away. Rejecting God's love. Rejecting God's forgiveness. Repent your sins. Place your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Surrender your life to Jesus to be boss of your life, the master of your life, the leader of your life, the head honcho around you, the number one thing. Surrender. Whatever term you want to use. Surrender. Give up what you are. Don't walk God's life. One thing I've learned is that you're not promised tomorrow. You're not. All your promises is right now. Maybe that can end very soon. Right now you have an opportunity to say yes, Jesus. I am the same. Yes, Jesus. I'm not perfect. Yes, Jesus. I've done some horrible things. Yes, Jesus. Forgive me. Yes, Jesus. Come in my heart. Live. Yes, Jesus. Show me your love. Yes, Jesus. Teach me how to give your love. Yes, Jesus, lead me where you want me to go. Yes, Jesus, I want to serve you. Yes, Jesus, I want to be a part. I want to give away, get away from the constant rejection of your saving grace. Don't forget it. It's not too late. Not too late to stop what we're doing. And look inside of ourselves and see what God sees. See, that's what happened to me so many years ago. God found me running from me. Running from him as far and as fast, as wide as I can. I didn't want to do this, what I do now. I didn't want to be a preacher. No, I just think the world I want to do. God said, I need 
want you. I want you. I want you to be in the pulpit proclaiming my word. And finally, one day, a youth revival at Northside Baptist Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. A man was speaking. I had no idea his name. I'll find out if he God spoke to me as clear as I'm speaking to you right now. He spoke to Jack as well. He said, this is how I see you. This is what you can become. This is where you need to go. Don't say no anymore. Yes, it is. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'll I'll be with you. Captain said, Yes, Lord. I'll be with you. Yes, Lord. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're doing, but we'll just follow you and trust you. Yes, Lord, it's not too late to get started. It's not too late to ask forgiveness. It's not too late. Come. When we sing an invitation. Come. Christian and not Christian law. You know what I found, folks? It sounds strange. Christians can hear, hear me for seconds. I'm talking to you. You know what the hardest thing for a non Christian to do? They accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to make a public confession of faith. Remember how hard it was when you took that first step out of that aisle, out of your pew, and walked down that aisle and came down to the preacher? You were the only one in the church that moved. And every eye of the congregation watched you. Remember that? Kind of a scary time, isn't it? Think about this. <coughs> Let's say, for example, we have an invitation. Let's just say, Fred gets up and comes down and prays. He's not the first one to move. It's okay to go down there. Then let's say over here, Doug gets up and he comes down. He prays. Hey, this side says it's okay for me to come down too. Then Brian gets up. He comes down. He prays. All of a sudden, it's, it's easy. It's not a hard, scary thing to do because I'm not the only one down You ever wonder why Billy Graham who saves us is sending people come down from him? Yes, a lot of people are accepting Jesus Christ as they're going to say, but you know why? They're walking that aisle. They teach us this in some of the counseling classes. Because Emma is a Christian. Emma's accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She walks out. Fred is accepted Christ. Emma walks out and he falls in. He wouldn't go by himself. But he'll go again. That unsaved person will walk down with you. That unsaved person will step out and make a public profession of faith with you. Not because of you, not for you, not with you, and not in you. But you get to be a witness. Let them know they're not alone. Sometimes we get too smug in ourselves. We're a good Christian. We forget what it's like to be a non Christian. We forget what it's like to walk down the side and ask for God's forgiveness. How scary it is. How long you feel. How long Satan is making you feel. See, we've been with God for so long, we've forgotten what it's like to be alone. But a non saved person is still alone. And they're afraid. <clears throat> Maybe it takes us to stand up together and share the goodness of Christ. It's not just the speaking word that's for you, not just the singing words of the choir and the congregation. 
Not just lifting up prayers for those who are sick and ill, but actually finding someone or letting someone see you to extend for Jesus. I invite you today to come and find forgiveness, find love, and find mission. God's help. What will you do? You haven't committed the unpardonable sin yet. <clears throat> There's still time. Will you come? Let's pray. Father, heaven, thank you for teaching us today that we can stand with you, that you are truly, tenderly calling us to come home to you. That you're calling us, Father, to be a part of your family, a part of your kingdom. That, Father, we can stand with you. And, oh, Lord, you've given us all hope and understanding. Now, Father, as we finish this time of hearing and seeking your word, we just pray, Father, that we can have the courage to stand. Lord, if there's someone here today that needs to receive Jesus Christ and make a public profession of faith, I'll stand here with you. I'll be the first one down front. And I'll meet him. We'll pray and celebrate the end. Thank you, Jesus. For teaching us that we stand together with you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our head of invitation decision this morning is number 316. Jesus is tender to call. He's calling you today. You come this morning as we stand and say, number 316. Come, pray, sing for God's healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah.